Hello, I'm Sarah. I'm a third year PhD student at the Craig. Hi, I'm Sarah and I am head of student programs here at the Francis Crick. Hi, I'm Nana and I've just completed my PhD here at the Francis Crick Institute. I'm originally from Vienna, Austria. Um, I did all of my secondary schooling there and then I did my undergrad in St Andrews in Scotland and I got research experience during that time and then I started my PhD here. I went to school in the UK, grew up in the UK and went to university at Lancaster, did my undergrad in biomedical science and then worked as a research assistant before doing a master's and then applying and doing a PhD at the Crick. The best way to know if you like the research project is if reading papers on the topic feels a bit easier than maybe reading other papers and if you can envisage, envisage yourself uh, doing the experiments involved. A research project aims to answer one or many questions and I think a good way to know if you'll like a project is if those questions are interesting to you. You don't need to be an expert in them to think about the implications of those questions and whether that's something you want to uh, pursue. For most PhD interviews you'll be asked probably to present some research project and you'll be asked some questions on that, so research that you've done. Some interviews will involve reading a paper beforehand and you might be asked to discuss that and your thoughts on that. And in general, most PhD interviews will ask you about your motivation, why you want to do a PhD, if you're organised, if you're flexible, and also how you work with people. So standard kind of interview questions will also be asked. The best way to prepare is to be comfortable to answer questions that people might have about the research project you are presenting and being comfortable not knowing the answer to certain questions and also if you are asked to read a research paper, really thoroughly know it and really know the ins and outs of it. One way to prepare for an interview is also to look at the common interview questions. So there are common PhD interview questions online and it doesn't mean that you'll be asked one of those, but just practicing and preparing answers um, will help you come across as confidently as possible. So when you go into the interview setting, you're used to those types of questions. And just like Sarah said, really, really reading the literature that the lab has put out that you're applying to, or being able to answer questions on your own projects and experiences. This will help them get the most from you at the interview to decide if you're the best candidate. I, there were some questions that I was asked about my research project that I was presenting that I couldn't address, but um, I was open about that and I in, also speculated and, and hypothesized about uh, surrounding the answer, so some ideas I had about uh, what was actually going on. I think that's a great example of um, what people are looking for as well, just your ability to think on the spot. Um, so, yeah, as for me, I also prepared by reading literature um, and, you know, you're not an expert in the field usually, so you might not understand everything and that's okay. Um, they're not measuring your ability to regurgitate the paper, but more how you interact with the research, what you find interesting and how much you do um, uh, engage with the topic on a personal level. So most students will have an undergrad degree that's related to their PhD project, so a biology basis that might be specifically related. But really, lots of projects are quite multidisciplinary, so you might be doing a project that's more physics-based, and you might have some biology in that and some maths in that. So it won't always be directly related, but it tends to kind of cover some of the basis. The most important qualities that candidates um, have to be able to demonstrate are scientific curiosity and scientific thinking, so very logical, and also time management skills because you'll be juggling a lot of experiments and projects at the same time. I completely agree. I think the most important skills really are your scientific reasoning and that will be assessed throughout the interview in different ways. Um, and you will be assessed to some degree in your knowledge as you'll need some background or baseline knowledge in order to start being able to tackle the project. And lastly, uh, I think you're, an important skill that candidates need to have is the ability to communicate. Science is really about communicating the work you've done and your understanding. So the interview process will try and get the best out of you to see how well you do that. Absolutely, I think you should, if you're interested in a particular project, contact the supervisor. They always like to hear from uh, prospective candidates. You can have a little bit of a pre-chat to know what they're looking for in a PhD candidate. So it's, it's definitely a good idea if there's a particular lab you want to join to contact them beforehand.
what supervisors look for at the CRIC uh, differs from supervisors to supervisor, but I know what my supervisor was looking for was that ability to think scientifically. And he was also looking for the fact that I had had previous experimental experience, so wet lab experience, uh, because for him it was really important to know that I had experience doing experiments, uh, making mistakes, and dealing with experiments that don't work, and be able to bounce back when you encounter those difficulties. It's difficult to generalize what supervisors are looking for because they are all different, but I think it's fair to say that they're really looking for someone who fits the role. Um, it's not a personal thing, they're really looking for any background, any height, really doesn't matter. They're looking for your skills, they're looking for your experience, and they're looking for your um, personal uh, curiosity and engagement with the work. So I think it's really important to remember that um, supervisors are just trying to get an understanding of how close you match uh, as someone who could take on this project. So if you're an overseas candidate and looking to apply for a PhD, the most important thing is to check. So not all PhDs accept overseas candidates. Some only have funding for home candidates. Here at Francis Crick, we accept overseas candidates. It's really important to check all PhD ads to see if you're eligible to apply. Medically qualified candidates can apply for a PhD. So many institutes will offer um, specialized clinical research fellowships for medically qualified candidates here at the Francis Crick. We have a program for uh, medical graduates that run along the same PhD program as our non-clinical um, PhD students. So many people ask whether they need a master's degree to do a PhD. Um, some PhD programs require it. Here we don't. In the Crick we don't require a master's degree but we do ask for you to have some research experience. So we have some candidates here who come straight from their undergrad, but others and many who have master's degrees. So it really depends what experience you have um, and how you can tell us about that experience um, to see if you join the program. I don't have a master's degree. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's not a requirement. Each year we advertise about between 50 and 60 PhD um, positions here in the Crick. For those, we usually have about 2,000 applicants. So that doesn't mean one per one. Sometimes we have 500 people applying for the same PhD position. When I was applying, I remember feeling very nervous and also not even expecting to get an interview. And I also remember being quite intimidated at the interview because you're around uh, scientists who've been in the field for a very long time. I think if I could go back and speak to myself back then, I would sort of try and get rid of those nerves by letting myself know that the outcome isn't personal and the purpose of that interview isn't to grill you but just to find out whether you're a good fit for the role. When I was applying I had no expectations. I was applying to a lot of different um, programs so I took each one step by step but I was very excited when I got the invitation for the interview and uh, the good thing of, I guess um, in our case is the, Zoom inter uh, the interviews were on Zoom uh, so I didn't have that intimidating feeling of sitting in a room full of the other PhD students who are also applying for the same position. But I think if, if you are in, now in that uh, position, it's important to remind yourself that you are as qualified as any of the other people sitting um, in the same room as you and applying for the same position. And you have the skills, that's why you got invited to the interview. There's a non-scientific aspect to what supervisors are looking for. Um, they want to see that you're enthusiastic and uh, they, they're also looking to check that you're a good fit for lab. So part of the interview is also you speaking to lab members and, and them getting an understanding of you as a person. Yeah, absolutely. It's not about you know, who you are and what, what you've done before necessarily. But it's about being enthusiastic, about wanting the role, being a good fit for their lab. So that's yeah. a lot of what supervisors yeah. will look for. Yeah. Will they fit in my lab? And that could be for many reasons. Yeah. Another thing to prepare for the interview is to prepare questions to ask the supervisor and the members of the lab. Because it's a two-way street, the interview. It's not only them interviewing you, but you interviewing them to see whether they're a good fit as a lab for you to spend four years of a life, your life in. Um, and if it, that's not the case, then that's a really important thing to know.